it going? It's going well. How's it going with you? It's going pretty good. I'm excited about this new song coming out. So, yeah, so it's weird, but it's it's fun. Weird how? Because you spend so much time on, like writing these songs by yourself. And like before I met Eve, who's my producer and now record label, I was so in my own world that it's like my own little like thing. Um, now there's all these other bits and bops that are involved when you release something or making it sound like mastered or whatever, all that stuff. So it's just grander now, which is great, but it's, it's just different. Yeah, well, I, I know you've been playing live for a while. So, but this is obviously the first proper release. So, so why now? And why this song in particular? So I released a song in October called Modeled Man. Yeah. I don't know if you were talking about that one or the new yeah, one. I no, okay. I haven't heard the new one yet. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, the new one comes out um, on the 6th of this month but um with modeled man yeah wait what was the question again you asked why that song why that song like obviously that's it's a very intentional statement to the world of what you want to do yeah it's amazing i have to say like i'm gonna get that out there as well but like of all the songs that you've written so far why was it that you put out first i think that was probably one of the first songs that i showed to eve and it felt like, like you said, like a strong statement to the world a little bit. I do think though, as the songs start to come out, it'll show more of the diversity of what I would say, who I am as an artist and who I am as a vocalist and a writer. Um, but this song feels like the yin to the yang of the next one. So the next one is is a little, isn't quite like, like Muddled Man isn't setting up for all these songs that sound like Muddled Man. It's kind of setting up a story of like, this is how I felt in that moment. And I was really pissed off and feeling a lot of anger and resentment. But then you go through these waves of like, that kind of settles away. And then now you love the world and now the, now the world looks beautiful again. I feel like eventually when the record comes out, um, it'll make more sense as a whole. But um, Muddled Man definitely feels like one of the masks that I like to put on. Um, it feels very intense and masculine and kind of protective. Um, it feels like, I don't know, like a raw moment where you're just like in pure, I don't know, power and rage kind of. Not like violence necessarily, but um, I don't know. It's like powerful. It, it's really fun to sing. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it, it, I get I don't know why we picked that one as the first. I think it's because it 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 sounds so like we hit something with a sound that that was cool. I definitely had a lot of like Bauhaus influence and Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, and we were listening to um, Jenny Beth, who I had never listened to before. But um, oh, there's like a little hummingbird. That's crazy. Oh, nice. Really, are in love. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I am from New York, so I'm like, Ugh, yeah, you don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no hummingbirds. But um, yeah. And that that first song, Model Man, is it's almost uh it's definitely a song of two parts. You know, yeah, it comes out of the gate like here I am, like bang, bang, bang. And then it kind of transforms into this other thing, which is kind of beautiful and melancholy, and so and now we've got another song coming, which I didn't even know about until I was talking to you. So what can you tell me about that one? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, the, I like where Muddle Man goes. I think it feels like an unplugging, like when you've re- like let go of anger, or let go of something you can't change. You kind of are like floating in just acceptance, I feel like. But um, yeah, the new song is kind of quite the opposite of muddled man um but it still feels like me and i think that's why it was important that these two songs come out next to each other um because i don't think at least for me and i think for most people you're not like one thing 
or you're not in one feeling your whole life. You kind of go through these waves of different, different identifications with yourself. And um, while recording both of those songs, I was going through something that was very up and down in feelings. So I really wanted to capture um, and honor the fact that your feelings can change about something and that's that's okay. Um, and then it might go back and then you're like, fuck, I'm here again. Like that really sucks. Um, but yeah, the next song is Angel and it comes out on the 6th and it feels very New York. Like Muddled Man feels, feels like this fantasy world. But when I, whenever I listen to Angel, I always see myself, it feels like walking around in New York, hearing the little, like you catch a conversation or you hear some noise on the street from the cars or stuff like that. Sometimes when I listen to music um, while I'm walking around, I always think like maybe I should just record while I'm walking because you hear stuff that goes into songs, especially if you're listening to demos or something and you're like, oh, that taxi cab actually kind of sounded kind of sick. <laughs> or maybe I could like, like I found myself sometimes walking around and I just like stop and I start recording. But yeah, I don't know. It, it Angel feels more magical and, and more at peace with like, it's kind of like after the storm, I feel like. Obviously. Yeah. You know, we have to talk a little bit about your dad. So he comes from a band that has a very fervent fan base. Yeah. I think that's an understatement, if anything. <laughs> so they're going to be paying attention to what you're doing for sure. Does, do you let that get in your head at all? Or do you feel completely free from that when you're writing? I don't think I think about them when I'm writing. Um, but I mean... I obviously I grew since I grew up in New York I feel really grateful that I I wasn't raised in a family where celebrity or people knowing what you do in your job is like your life like your personal life so I didn't grow up in a house where like this is your identity like this is who your dad is and this is your identity um so it hasn't been this overarching like what am I going to do? What are they going to say? Like kind of thing. Um, but naturally like with social media and stuff like that, like they're going to see it. They comment on all my photos and whatever. And from a young age, I think it was a little strange um, to get all this attention from people that I didn't know who they were. And it wasn't for me. It was kind of like verbatim or like in a connection to, um, but no, I don't think, I don't, it doesn't really, I don't think it really gets to me too much. I'm super close with my dad. So maybe if we weren't close, maybe it would be more difficult. Yeah. I, I think it's like you, you take it or leave it. Like it's there and some people are going to hate stuff and some people are going to like stuff, but as long as I like it, I think it's, it's, it'll feel good. Yeah. Well, from the comments that I've seen so far from people who were obviously fans of his band, people seem to be into it like it's very it's very different from what he's doing but like i can see the, the link for sure yeah yeah i think there's definitely it's not as electronic based i think i guess that's like the main difference um <clears throat> but yeah so far so far it's been there haven't been like crazy hate mail like i don't know <laughs> kind of stuff um but they're intense. I mean, he definitely has like the fans that you want to have. They're super loyal and they, they stick around and like, that's, that's cool. Um, yeah. So, so far, so good. We'll see what the next song. <laughs> Your dad's career has been a long one, but it's had significant highs, but it's also had significant lows. Has, has he given you any advice about this, this career choice that you're making? And or does he like to like let, let you find your own way a little bit? How's it working? He's definitely very supportive, but he he's letting me do my own thing. I think he he just wants me if this is he his only thing is if this is what I want to do, then I should just go for it um, and do it the right way and not like skip corners and stuff like that, um, which has been awesome because 
if I didn't, I probably wouldn't have had a band. I'd have a hired band or things like that. My band are all people I hang out with. We have the same group of friends. We're all the same age. So it's nice to like build together. And I think he would definitely be an advocate for that, that it's nice to be with other people and experience stuff and travel the world and all that good stuff together. Um, yeah, I think he's just letting me kind of do my own thing, which is cool. Yeah, very cool. I'm I'm glad you said that actually. So you yeah, mentioned- he's not like a you need to do this and you have to be just like me and like no. <laughs> so you, <laughs> mentioned, you, you mentioned the band. How long have you been playing with these guys? Um, it was a year in November, so we're pretty new. But um, I've been writing stuff on my own for a really long time. But kind of after COVID or during COVID, I honed in a lot on what I wanted to do. And then I sent out a bunch of demos um, uh, to Eve Rothman. And then he somehow understood like my weird demo garage band, like sound. I don't even know what they were. But to me, I understood it because I was my own stuff I listened to so it didn't matter what other people thought um but it but he kind of brought me into this world of like okay I hear what you're trying to do like let me lift this up and put this around you and stuff like that so that was a really good experience but having my band has been fun because the songs shift when we play them live they kind of like become a different thing which is fun because then it's like the band sound we've mentioned two songs what what's to come after that are you working towards an album already or an ep or something like that i am i'm working towards an album which i'm really excited about it all kind of happened really fast because a lot of this stuff was during like after covid and stuff like that so people were kind of more around than usual but yeah there's there's a full album coming out later this year okay you're gonna take it (laughs) Are you, you're going to take it on the road as well. Have you just played around New York? Have you played uh, elsewhere yet? I've all, we've only been playing in New York, and then now on Monday is going to be we're playing a couple shows here with our friends band who's on a tour, and then um, we're going to have the second single release on Monday. So that's why we're in LA. We've never played anywhere else but New York. So this will be our first out of New York show, but we really want to go on tour. Hopefully soon. I would love to jump yeah. on someone's wagon. <laughs> Whose wagon would you want to jump on if you could choose anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Um, I've been hearing maybe that. Um, I mean, I know uh, Pornos for Pyros played a show recently in festival. So maybe if they go on a tour, maybe they'll knock on our door. Um, I mean... If Alice and Chains still exist, that would be really sick. Um, Chains Addiction, like, would be amazing. Um, I don't know. Honestly, like, at this point, I just want to, I just want to be on, I want to go out there and try stuff. There's a band, Starcrawler. um, That's really cool. Um, Yeah, we have, I think, my guitarist's other band, Clovis, they just played a show with them so that could be kind of cool i feel like we're in the same kind of mm, I can area of music yeah i just want to thank you for your time it's been really fun talking to you i'm yeah. excited to see what you do next um i think it's going to be a really interesting journey for you hopefully we'll get to see you in a room like live at some point yeah um but i have one final question and uh it's a bit of an obvious one and that is what's your favorite depeche mode album Oh God. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly off the top like, of your head. Don't think about it too much. Um, can I say song? Yeah, sure. I like um my dad's been rehearsing recently, so sometimes I hear him in his room. Um, but condemnation, I think, is one of my favorite songs. It's just so beautiful. Like it makes it it's so emotional. I feel like also the time that it was written and when he was singing it, it's it's kind of heavy, but I feel like right now that's my favorite song. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but right I don't now, just don't right now it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I love my dad, but I, I don't I don't really listen to his music. Yeah, I can get I can understand. But I respect it. Like I, I respect it. It's just because it's my dad. 
<laughs> I get that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thanks again. Really nice talking to you. And um, good luck with everything that's coming up. Thank you so much. All right. You take care. I'm a man didn't know what to do with the sense when he had the chance. I'm not a man. But run, won't you dare?